Hello and welcome, this is Tron from Homegrown Audio and now I'm going to show you how I do my layering. So this is going to be just a simple bass layered with a sine wave and it sounds something like this. Before all that, I wanted to share with you my Patreon page. It's full of stuff that will be very useful for you, or well, that you'll actually need, like mastering and mixing deals, etc. For beginners and equally for advanced people. So yeah, check out the tier, see if any fits you like a glove. And let's get on with it. I loaded the project that we've been working on since the first tutorial. This is our original kick and bass. Let's duplicate the bass channel so the MIDI information is exactly the same on both channels. From that second channel, I'm going to remove all the processes that will mess up with the face and with the tonality, even if it's minuscule changes. I don't want any of that on my sub. I'll just leave a low pass and high pass on, the, on equilibrium, and we'll get to that later. Now in the oscillator A on that duplicate base, I'm just going to go for basic shapes and leave the sine wave. Again, we'll get back to the phasing in a minute. On the original baseline channel, go to the table edit and turn down completely the first bar, which is the fundamental. Now we have one baseline without a fundamental and one sub underneath. So here, turn off the filters. We don't want any filtering or anything messing the face on our sub. Adjust the face until you're happy or your ears bleed. After we've done that and we're happy with our layering, we can start a little bit the processing. I'm going to open up two group channels. One is going to be the kick and bass, and the other one is going to be just the bass. These two bass channels, we're going to go to routing and we're going to just route them to the bass group. Now, the kick is going to go directly to the kick and bass. And finally, the bass group is going to be going to the kick and bass group. Now let's compress the bass and I'm just going to use the stock compressor and Cubase. So I don't want a soft knee or auto and the analysis, let's move it to peak release. Between the release and the attack, I like to make more or less one sixteenth should be more or less following the, the program material. The ratio, I normally move it down to 1.5. It's not compressing too much. You see the analyzer the kick is pushing about 3 dbs more than the bass that is pretty healthy dynamic i normally go for those numbers now let's compress both kick and bass together here it depends what you want the analysis to be peak or rms it mainly depends on you i'm going to use peak again but rms will give you a much slower compression envelope
to listen to the compression better, I generally push the threshold really low so it's over compressing and then I dial in my settings so I can really hear what the compressor is doing. And then I adjust the threshold back until it's on the level of compression that I would like. In the end, compressing our sounds will give us a much cleaner version and tighter dynamics than if we weren't compressing it. You know, the summing between the two sounds, kick and bass, and actually the summing between the two bass lines, is getting gelled by the compressor, and that is very essential in this in this process. Now let's hear let's hear the difference with and without compression then. compare the two bass lines, one that is layered and one that is not layered. Well, that's all for now. I hope you liked it. Like the video if you feel like it and subscribe to the channel for more content like this every week. Check my Patreon page for all these presets and more and see you next time. Mm -hmm.